For the last week, the DNC has been spitting in your face. First, telling you that the economy is good, then saying that it's bad. Throughout all of that, Kamala Harris somehow has nothing, absolutely nothing, and I say nothing, to do with the economy. Saying that there is a border problem, and then saying that Kamala Harris is not in charge of the border, and she was never in charge of the border. The Democratic Party wants you to forget everything you know as a fact, and instead focus on exactly what they're telling you and nothing else. The campaign that Kamala Harris is running is approaching the end of the honeymoon phase and is starting to lose its power. We need to continue to push the truth and remind people who Kamala Harris really is. And don't get tied up within all of these sweet little nothings that Kamala Harris is telling you at the DNC because it's all a lie. Day after day, they have these elite guests and these elite people that come to the DNC convention. They have people like AOC and the Obamas and the Clintons and Bernie Sanders that all tell you that Trump is Hitler. The Democratic Party keeps saying that they are from the government and they are here to help you. Whenever you hear a person from the government tell you that they're from the government and they're here to help you, you need to run in the opposite direction as fast as humanly possible. And that's not even fast enough. You need to run even faster away from these people because they want to take power from you and instead give it to themselves. With that being said, we're going to be digging into the third and the fourth day of the DNC. The last episode that we did, we digged into the first and the second day of the DNC, and there was so many protesters outside yelling in cops' faces, pushing them, punching them, stuff like that. Two people got arrested, a couple people got killed, but the DNC is not going to talk about that, but I am. Without further ado, let's dig in. Facts over facts over tracks is a mess, spitting slow, spitting fast. I could roast, I could gas, think I'm okay at last, but I don't know if that can erase all the past. Without even just not even paying attention to what's right here, it is pumpkin, pumpkin latte season. I love my pumpkin season latte because of the fact that I love to live, laugh, love the Halloween season. I don't like getting scared, but I like the pumpkin. That's what I like. Pumpkins. And I like, um, <laughs> and I like getting the pumpkin seeds out of it, but that's about it. Okay. With that being said, okay, I'm getting slightly distracted here, but we have a big show. We have so many things to cover. We're going to be digging into day three right now. A little hectic. I mean, <laughs> very, very cringy. We have so much joy, like the pumpkin spice latte, the, that gives me so much joy. We have so much joy at the DNC, but like, you just feel it in the air. You feel the joy. You dance and oh yeah, dancing. Tim Waltz throwing out his back, oh, dancing on stage. We have so many turn down for what? Oh, turn down for what? We have we have music going. We have music blasting into your ears. We have people. Uh, Trump is Hitler. This and killing babies out front in the in the RV. Yep, twenty five ki kids have now been killed outside the abortion center that they have outside of the DNC. Um, very, very disgusting stuff. Um, bisectomies are being done for free, too. Um, this is just the Democratic Party in a nutshell. It's just so much joy. Don't you feel it? You feel it in your blood, the joy. You just want to get up. You just start dancing, oh, 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 dancing, dancing, dancing all over the place, getting your joy all over the place. That's what Tim Waltz is doing, and it's very, very cringy, and it's very, very disgusting. This is from Sky News. It's the honor of my life to accept the nomination for Vice President of the United States. Vice President nominee Tim Walz finally um, accepts the party's nominee and thanks Kamala Harris for putting her trust in him. It's, it's the honor of my life to accept your nomination for Vice President of the United States. See, it's just so funny how much... He has actually lied in the DNC. He said, oh, well, just like how I used to coach the football and blah, blah, blah. Listen, you are a volunteer assistant coach, first of all. You were never in any combat zone while you were in the National Guard. You just keep saying lie after lie after lie after lie after lie that I don't even think that he knows what's reality and what's fake at this point because his whole entire scheme that he's crafted over here is fake. Kamala Harris is fake. Everything about the DNC is just fake. Nobody's that joyful. Did get? Oh, I'm so excited. Dancing, dancing. Oh, turn down for what? Turn down for like, what are you doing? It's just so cringy. If you watch this and you're actually like, hmm, I'm so excited for November, then you are absolutely insane. 
Why are you getting compelled by dancing, an old man dancing, rather than the policies that he wants to implement? Policies are what's going to actually affect your life. If a politician dances for you, it's not going to make the prices of gas go down. It's not going to make the gas price that you pay for natural gas, the heating gas that you use for your house and cooking gas, go down. It's not going to make the electric prices go down. It's not going to make the grocery store prices go down. It's not going to make anything go down by dancing. All that is going to make you do is lose all your credibility and make sure that actually nobody respects you. I mean, if I'm being completely honest, I do not respect Tim Walls after this dancing ceremonious uh, thing on the stage. Like, ooh, ooh, dancing. Oh, so excited. So excited. Like, I do not respect him now. It's just disgusting. Tim Walls is old high school football players make an appearance at the DNC. Now, um, the thing is. Here, he was, again, he was a volunteer assistant coach. So, I mean, I, I, he's just digging right into this because he wants to act like he actually watches football. I don't even watch football. I'm, I'm very good with that. I would rather pay attention to politics because I feel like that's even more entertaining sometimes. I mean, uh, yeah, when there's, a, when there's a field goal that was just made and you're like, yeah, football, and then the tackle and the stuff like that, I hear my parents yelling about it all day long. Um, but for me, politics is an all year round thing. It's not just during the fall that I can actually get excited about this, the fall and the winter. It's all year long that I can get excited for this. So, um, Minnesota Senator Amy Kolobar Char on Tim Wolves, a former football coach, knows how to level the playing field and a former public school teacher knows how the school likes J.D. Vance. Okay, so again, if you're going to look back to when um, Tim Walls was actually a teacher, he admitted that none of his students actually made it into Ivy League schools, never made it into Yale at all. So how are you going to sit here and act as if Tim Walls is the best teacher here if none of his students actually got into Yale? Because you would think that if you are a good teacher, you're going to have a higher percentage of, of students actually getting into Yale. But of course, if you're not a good teacher, then nobody's going to un actually understand. Of course, they have Oprah Winfrey over here. When a house is on fire, we don't ask about the homeowner's race or religion. No, we try our best to save them. <laughs> this clip is just hilarious. Here. Despite what some would have you think, we are not so different from our neighbors. When a house is on fire, we don't ask about the homeowner's race or religion. We don't wonder who their partner is or how they voted. No, we just try to do the best we can to save them. And if the place, place happens to belong to a childless cat lady. Like imagine. <laughs> This is just so funny. Imagine being the lady that they cut to after she says childless cat lady. Like they are looking in the audience for the most childless cat lady looking person. And then they cut to you. They cut to you out of all people. And she's just looking around like, oh, is it me? I'm the childless cat lady. Like <laughs> this is even worse. Okay. What well, all of the talk about, about JD Vance and oh my God, how dare he and stuff like that. Listen, that was obviously, that's not something I would say, but obviously when you're in the local field and you're running for your local senator or your local congressman, that's something completely different than running for the national stage. And yes, looking towards that, I mean, if I would to go back, I don't, I would not say that. And I don't think he would say that either, knowing that he would be the potential or yeah, the, the nominee for vice president, he would not say that. But the thing is, he did say that. And, you know, it is it, it does have some kind of truth to it because we can't have this country running by people that just don't care about this country at all. And that's what the childless cat lady. It's just it's a joke. I mean, it's obviously not being serious, but then they're going to be they're going to sit here and have it being a serious thing. And then they're going to point. There's even worse a point towards the camera towards a person that actually looks like a childless cat lady. It's the most awful thing you could possibly do. And they turn the volume up to 1000 by putting this poor lady on TV, which she doesn't even know what's going on. She's like, OK, yeah, I mean, I kind of agree with Oprah. And then they point the camera at her. <laughs> I just can't. The Democratic Party is just, oh, my God, they're such a mess right now. I just can't. They need to get it together. They need to actually just reevaluate themselves. They should have had this election. They should have sat this one out. They should have still had Joe Biden out there. 
I'm pu trying to push the policies. He could have lost, and then they could have pushed him all up in the back and stuff like that. Let him just go and do the same exact thing he's doing now, actually. Just sit back in California, just relax on the beach, or go back to Delaware and stuff like that, just to relax. And then just blame Joe Biden for everything. But they can't do that now because Kamala Harris is um, in charge now. So then they have Democratic... Um, they have the Democrat from uh, Pennsylvania, Josh Shapiro. It's not freedom to tell our children what books they are allowed to read. Why are so many Democrats completely comfortable with making pornography available in our kids' schools? Truly sick people. This is from the, tr um, the Trump war room. Now, if I was Josh Shapiro, I would stop going to these DNC meetings because you just look pathetic at this point. You are, the, you are up close and personal to the potential to be vice president under Kamala Harris. And of course, Kamala Harris said, no, nah, no, nah, I don't, I don't want you to be on my ticket. You're a Jew. That's exactly what Kamala Harris tells him. Obviously not exactly like that. But rephrasing here, this is exactly why they didn't pick Josh Shapiro. So for Josh Shapiro to bow tow to them still is just a little bit pathetic in my opinion. And I think that it shows. It really does show. It's not freedom to tell our children what books they're allowed to read. It's just truly disgusting. It really is because of, the, I mean, it's true. The, porn, the books that they are saying that are not allowed in public elementary schools, I mean, mind you, or middle schools are filled with pornography and we can go through those very books and we can actually, we can see we can see why these books are not allowed in these in these um schools but the thing is obviously it's not a book ban because you can go on Amazon and still purchase them that's not the that, that's not what a book ban is when you can still purchase a book it's not a book ban it's called having child age appropriate books available for your kids to read and this is exactly what i want to do and we will be doing this um, next week or so. I'm buying those books, the banned books, and we will be going through them on my show because these people just do not know what's actually in these books. People keep saying banned books, banned books, banned books. Oh my God, so many banned books, so many banned books. Nobody actually knows what's in these books. I mean, yeah, the people that actually open it up and I see what's in these books because it comes up on my Twitter feed and my X feed. I'm like, this is truly disgusting stuff here. But again, I would like to have these books in my possession so I can show them to to some people in my family that just want to reject the truth. The truth of the, and the fact is that these books have pornography in them and they should not be allowed in schools. It's just crazy. It really is. Moving into the next um, thing we have, we have um, Nancy Pelosi claims that Kamala Harris and crooked Joe Biden had one of the most successful presidencies of modern times, which does not even make any sense because if you were to look at it, successful equals economic devastation, wide open borders, and the brink of World War II, and so much more. This is according to the Trump war room, and it's completely true here. <laughs> On January 20th, 2021, with the inauguration of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, we established one of the most successful presidencies of modern times. I just don't understand how this is even true, though, because of all those aforementioned things. Those are all the things that you cannot avoid. Obviously, we have the whole entire world on fire. We have Europe being completely invaded by Russia over here. Obviously, Russia is trying to invade Ukraine over here. We have the brink of war. Well, I mean, there is already a war in the Middle East with Israel versus Hamas in Hezbollah in more importantly, Iran. So why are we going to sit here and ignore these facts? And of course, China already has their eyes on Taiwan. They're locking in. They're saying, I just want to invade Taiwan so bad. What if I just what if I just set off a little nuke over here? And what if I just set off a little a little bomb over here? Let's see. Oh, I'll put my ship close to Taiwan. Let's see what America does. Nothing. And then China goes a little bit closer and a little bit closer. And that's how we get ourselves into a war because we're weak in foreign policy. And then you can look in North Korea and North Korea is like, eh, what if we bomb a little bit of South Korea? What's America going to do? And then, and then little Rocket Man is like, hmm, let's see what America does. Nothing. And then he does it again, and it does it again, and does it again. And then what's South Korea going to do? Call in to Joe Biden, and Joe Biden's over here in the beach of Delaware. Hello? Ooh, what's going on over there? Like, he doesn't even know what's going on. So even if South Korea was to call Joe Biden, is he actually ready? Is he fit for the war? No, he's not fit for war. He has no idea what's going on, and it's disgusting. It really is. It really, really is. 
And do you really expect Kamala Harris to actually know what she's doing when it comes to these things? I really don't think so. I really do not. Oh, we need to actually really pay attention. So, um, turning on to the next clip here, we have Bill Clinton, which just sounds older than Joe Biden. I just didn't even know how this is even possible. Um, former President Bill Clinton um, says that Joe Biden did something that is really hard for a politician to do. He voluntarily gave up political power, which he did not. He was ousted. He was forced out. He was kicked. He was he was shoved. He was just he was not voluntarily step, stepping down here. He was he was forced out of the presidency, not even out of the presidency because he's still the president. He was forced out of the out of running for president for re-election. And yeah, you could tell, too, because the, the days after he announced this, they just convinced him, convinced him, convinced him, and he never did anything live. He just stayed locked in his room while they were trying to tell him, listen, you need to step out. You need to step out. So it's just truly disgusting stuff. And then he did something that's really hard for a politician to do. He voluntarily gave up political power. No, he didn't. He really didn't, though. Like, why are we going to sit here and lie? And it's so funny, too, that Bill Clinton is actually younger than Joe Biden. And Joe Biden sounds younger than Bill Clinton. And it's funny that Bill Clinton is the same age as Trump, but Bill Clinton sounds old. He really sounds old. He's getting old. He really is. This is not Bill Clinton of the 1990s. This is Bill Clinton of the 2024. It's crazy. And it really is sad. It's really telling now that Bill Clinton <laughs> was president 30 years ago, around 30 years ago, give or take, maybe 25, give or take, right? And Bill Clinton is three years younger than Joe Biden, which is the current president of America. So th that just tells you that we're just going down more and more down. We should we should start electing people that are younger. But the thing is here, we need to actually focus on what their mental capabilities are. I think that Trump is more than mentally capable to actually run this country like he did nearly four more than four years ago. Um, of course. So. Um, moving on to the next one here, we have James Taylor annoyed at being pumped from the DNC lineup, saying that an updated version of Fire and Rain last night at, on Colbert. Um, let's see here. James Taylor was actually bumped from the DNC for some strange reason here. DNC moving up tonight's start time by 30 minutes. That's because last night's programming ran almost an hour behind. The program ran so late, DNC organizers said they had to cut out at least some of the elements, and that apparently included singer James Taylor. Yeah, that's crazy. So I'm going to get copyright. So the DNC does not have to, they do not know how to organize anything. So they're going to have a bunch of people plan to come on. And then, of course, they're too late on it. And then it's running like 10 o'clock at night, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock. They have Joe Biden coming in at like three o'clock in the morning or so. It was around like 12 o'clock when he came. But this, it's still, these people do not understand the working class families. And they're going to sit here and talk about the middle class families. The middle class families cannot sit up all night long at on a weekday until like 12 o'clock at night what are we gonna do and then it starts at seven so from seven to two 11 12 o'clock at night what are you gonna do you're gonna sit at your tv you need to go to bed because you need to be at work from nine to five the next day so these people do not understand the working class families and they're gonna sit here and pretend as if they do they really do not michigan attorney general diana um, Nessel, I've got a message for the republicans and the justices of the united states supreme court you can pry this wedding band from my cold dead gay hand which is just disgusting because obviously the Supreme Court can is not going to say that gay marriage is not marriage. So I don't know what really the point is in this. Um, of course, we already redefined it. So, I mean, again, it is what it is at this point here. But the thing is, they're focusing on the wrong things here. They're sitting here trying to make a political argument, which is really not even sticking because of the fact that everybody already knows that they're just BSing you. Um, I mean, everybody that's actually reasonable already knows that they're trying to BS you and trying to fear monger their way through the election time. Not true whatsoever. Um, you need to pay attention to their policies instead of the lies that they say. And it's hard because they lie so many times to your face. It's sad. It's pathetic and it's despicable. So moving into the next article here, we have um, Harris Biden Co Commerce Secretary Dina Raman. Nando says that she doesn't believe new government data that shows almost half a million, I mean, not, pardon me, 
Almost a million jobs Harrison Biden admin claims to have created doesn't actually exist. And um, she says, quote, I'm not familiar with that. Of course, she's not familiar with that because of the fact that she does not pay attention to any actual organizations. And she thinks that she is the supreme organization in America, which is just not true. You hear that. Do you potentially think that this new numbers could be a liability for this campaign? No. When I hear that, first of all, I don't believe it because I've never heard Donald Trump say anything truthful. It is, though, from the Bureau of Labor. I don't I am not familiar with that. Of course, you're not familiar with that because of the fact that anything that actually says that you're a liar, anything that says that you actually um, said information that's just not true. Of course, you don't trust it. And of course, you're just not going to trust information just because Trump says it. I, Even though I do not like you, I can trust, maybe I can't at this point, but I could have trusted something that you said as long as I know that I could just go and fact check it myself. I can actually see it. And of course, she has no answer for it. That's why she's actually going to just sit here and make up excuses for it. Now, moving on to the next thing, we actually have anti-Israel protests are continuing outside of the DNC. The mainstream media is not showing you this. Of course, they want to focus on the unity and, and frame it as if there's so many Americans that just agree with this. No, so many people are outside because of the fact that the DNC has allowed these people to make it to uh, um, to get a grasp on their policies get a grasp on who they are as people and to frame the policy positions that they actually have even though there is a right policy decision and a wrong policy decision so these are this is a video of the protesters outside right now <laughs> Yeah, so of course these people are just going to sit here and say that Israel just needs to be eradicated from the earth. Um, they're going to just keep repeating that. Um, the anti-Israeli protest outside of the DNC gets intense after an arrest at the train station. Police are trying to keep the protesters behind the barricades. One protester can be uh, seen trying to climb over the wall. So are they going to give this protester the Ashley Biden? I mean, the not the Ashley, the Ashley Babbitt treatment by shooting her for no reason whatsoever? No, of course they're not, because these are Democrats at the end of the day. I just don't understand what the point is in actually doing this, because, yeah, you're climbing the wall, but what what's the point in doing that? It just does not make any sense. Um, Democrat Rep. Um, Vernia Echobar says that she met Kamala Harris when she visited El Paso. One quick trip that the borders are... Um, Kamala Harris won and only visit to the border during her time, and it was 1,153 days ago. Of course, and they clean up the whole entire city so it looks nice in, for the camera, and they cleaned up the streets, and they told all the homeless to get out of here. Of course, that was 1,153 days ago. She will not visit the border now because she does not care about the border. She does not care about America. And she's going to sit here and try to lie to your face saying that she will secure the border, which does not make any sense whatsoever because she could do so now. I met the vice president when she visited El Paso. I saw firsthand how she engaged with law enforcement, mm -hmm. migrants, and human rights advocates. Oh, yeah. Oh, Kamala. Oh, she cares so much. She cares so much that she has not been to the border. She has not been anything remotely close to the border in something like uh, 1,153 days. And I think it's one more day now. So 1,154 days. Kamala Harris has not been to anything remotely close to the border. 20 years For 20 years, Kamala Harris has been through um, tough as nails when it comes to securing our border. Of course, it's not... They are actually giving mass amnesty instead and free health care and free money and free food to these illegal aliens. They're getting the jobs that Americans cannot actually get. That's exactly it. For 20 years, Kamala Harris has been tough as nails when it comes to securing our border. But by nails, he actually means a rusty nail that when you go to hammer, it actually breaks. So that's the nail that he actually means to avoid the DNC protesters from reaching the security fence. Hundreds of, hundreds of Chicago police has formed a large perimeter to prevent the crowd from getting close to it. The uh, security fence for the DNC um, is there. They have a fence to protect themselves, but we can't have a wall or a fence around our nation to protect our nation. It just does not make any sense. I think they should just let the protesters inside of the DNC and actually let them face because if they care so much about democracy, democracy this, democracy, 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 
let these people talk to you. But of course, they're not going to let that happen. Um, John Poland and Rachel Goldberg, the parents of Israeli um, American hostage, uh, ha Hamas hostage, Hernish Goldberg, Poland, get a long standing ovation at the DNC and chance of bring them home. Okay, so you're going to sit here and lie to us and say that you're actually caring about them now, which does not make any sense because of the fact that they did not do anything um, to bring home anybody. And of course, James O'Keefe is undercover at the DNC, which um, is actually really funny because of the fact that Matt Walsh is always, I mean, also undercover at the DNC. So it's funny if they ran into <laughs> both of them, both of them ran into each other. That would be hilarious. Um, and I do want to cover this video, so I'm probably going to react to this video for tomorrow because it's actually funny. I watched the first like minute or so and I'm like, I need to react to this. It's hilarious. Um, the slip from the century from the the slip of the century from the speaker at the DNC Black Caucus meeting. And we have 70 days to act. After 70 days, we can go back to acting crazy, which obviously is there is the truth. I mean, they're sitting here saying, oh, well, um, just pretend as if you're moderate just for 70 days so we can trick the audience, trick democracy. And then um, and then you can just do whatever you want. So here's a clip here. It, there's just so many things to cover here. You got 70 days to act right, y'all. That's right. Now, after 70 days, we can go back there and crazy. <laughs> right? Everybody already knows this is the truth. That's why they're like, um, should we laugh at this? Should we not laugh at this? I mean, yeah, you should laugh at this because it's the reality. It's the truth. It's the it's not fiction whatsoever because this is exactly what's going to happen. Now, that's day three. 30 minutes. <laughs> day three. We have day four now. Day four is even crazier because Kamala Harris came up there. Um, so many lies were told. It's just bad. I was trying to watch it live with my with my family. I'm like, this is just crazy. I had to just go to bed. I'm like, no, nah, I'm just going to cover this tomorrow. I had enough of this. There's just so much lies being told. I watched the first, I would say, 10 minutes of Kamala Harris's speech. And I said, I'm going to bed. I'm just going to I'm going to deal with this. This is tomorrow's problem. OK, I'll break this down tomorrow. I do not care about what Kamala Harris has to say about where she came from. And oh, and my mommy this and my mommy this and Kamala Harris's sisters talking over. I do not care at all. You're just a big liar. You're nonstop saying about how Trump is going to take the rights from this. And Trump wants you to to um, not get in a, in a save your life if you are pregnant and you need life saving care. That's something completely different. And then sitting here saying that um, that jumpstart is going to be something that of the past if Trump was elected. It just is not making any sense at all. Um, of course, it, it's just lie after lie after lie. Kamala Harris says, I believe everyone has a right to safety, to dignity, and to justice, unless you're one of the countless American citizens who have been victimized or worse by an illegal alien Kamala feared into this country, then you're out of luck, of course, because Kamala Harris will lie and say that she cares about law and order and she's going to frame herself into be this big, tough on crime DA. But of course, it's not the reality at all. She's not tough on crime whatsoever. So let's listen to this right here. Because I believe everyone has a right to safety, to dignity uh -huh. and to justice. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure you do. That's exactly why. You sit here and you allow illegal aliens to kill American citizens every single day. Your borders are do something about the border. But of course, she does not want to at all. She does not want to because she does not care. She's not going to sit here and actually protect you. But she's going to sit here and pretend as if she's tough on crime. That's a crime. Breaking into this country is a crime. You need to arrest them and make sure that they're not going to sit here and cause a ruckus to the American citizens that are actually just trying to live their life. That's exactly the problem here, Kamala. But of course, Kamala does not care whatsoever. She only cares about herself. That's the problem here. Moving on to the next one here. Kamala Harris owns America's inflation crisis. She was proud of, of casting the tie-breaking votes on Biden's trillion-dollar spending bills that sent prices soaring and made Americans even poorer. Now, of course, this is from the Trump... The so eyes are video. 50, the nays are 50. The Senate being equally divided. The, the vice, vice president, president votes in the, the affirmative, affirmative. And the nomination is confirmed. And the concurrent resolution as amended is adopted. The vice president votes in the affirmative and the motion to proceed is agreed to. On this vote, 
The yeas are 50, the nays are 50. The Senate being equally divided, the Vice President votes in the affirmative, and the bill, as amended, is passed. So the Inflation Reduction Act has been passed because of the fact that she wanted to actually read the breaking vote. And of course, that did not help inflation because it never would. Spending more money does not help inflation. It makes inflation even worse. Um, obviously, all 50 states have now set new record high gas prices under Kamala. Um, Kamala Harris took unprecedented action to dismantle President Trump's successful border security policies and imported millions of illegal aliens into our communities. The Biden administration um, has took 94 ex executive actions in the first 100 days to dismantle President Trump's border security, including hating halting um, construction of the border wall, and ending the remaining Mexico policy. Harris implemented a catch-and-release scheme via the CBP-1 app that allowed millions of unvetted illegal aliens to be resettled in the United States communities with zero oversight. Under Harris, at least 10 million illegal immigrants, 30 tons of fentanyl, and, and criminals from all over the world have crossed into the border as American citizens are raped and murdered by illegal aliens with no right to be here. Kamala Harris would take 10 steps um, Kamala Harris would take it 10 steps further if she was elected in November. Kamala Harris wants to make every state a sanctuary state. Kamala Harris backs mass amnesty for millions of illegals already in this country. Kamala supports dismantling a decriminalizing, I should say, illegal border crossings. Kamala Harris thought Barack Obama deported too many illegal aliens. Kamala Harris compared ICE officers to the KKK and said that we need to start from scratch with the agency that arrests and deports rapists and killers. Kamala supports taxpayer-funded health care coverage for illegal aliens. Um, Kamala Harris wants to shut down Im immigration detention centers and release thousands of criminals. Kamala Harris said that the border wall is medieval and mocked the idea that terrorists would take advantage of the southern border. As senator, Kamala Harris urged the Senate not to fund additional border protection personnel. And she will continue to do the same exact thing under her presidency. Kamala Harris claims that she fought against the cartels, but in reality, she has allowed the drug cartels to rage war in America, steal innocent lives, and revenge our community, or ravage our communities with deadly drugs. I fought against the cartels who traffic in guns and drugs and human beings. Uh huh. Sure you did. Threaten the security of our safety of our community sure you did sure you did that's why more illegal aliens are coming through our border now than ever before kamala harris also says that she wants to create an opportunity economy where quote everyone has a chance to see that's why we will create what i call an opportunity economy mm -hmm. an opportunity economy where everyone has the chance to compete and a chance to succeed yeah that's what we have right now it's 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 called a open market in where everybody can just create a job and then everybody can create a business doing whatever they want to do. You can create a business at the IRS website literally right this second. You can create a business with your EIN, which is a sole proprietorship in America, and you can sell whatever you want. You can sell whatever you want in America. Nobody's going to restrict you from doing so. Um, of course, she's just going to lie and say that of um she's gonna lie and say this and lie and say that everything that she says is just one big lie and of course they will not mention the trump attempted assassination not even one time at their convention as if it just never even happened and then joe biden's gonna sit here and tweet out jill and i spoke to kamala harris and can't wait to watch her accept the historic nomination kamala and tim will inspire that generation and lead us into the future of course, they're going to put their fake TV there in front of the fireplace, which just makes absolutely no sense because who puts a TV in front of a fireplace? It li literally in front, not on the mantle. Mantle is a little bit different. The TV's up on the mantle, that's fine. Or up on the wall above the fireplace, that's fine. But in front of the fireplace, in this most natural position actually possible, I, I just don't see it. Who does that? Who does that? It just does not make any sense. Why? Just why? Of course, um, uh, Tim Walls is also going to meet with the um, billionaires Alex Soros at the DNC, of course, um, because that's a good billionaire. So the the 
Bernie Sander, the Bernie Sanders is a good um billionaire. Pitzker is a bad billionaire. Michelle Obama is a good billionaire. Oprah is a good bi billionaire. Elizabeth Warren is a good billionaire. And you're going to you're going to sit here and you're going to say this one's a good billionaire. That's not a good billionaire. This is a good billionaire. And you're going to say oh, oh, we need to tax the rich some more, but not my buddies over here though. If you're good to me, then I'm good to you. Um of course, the anti pro the anti Hamas I mean, the anti-Israel protesters outside of the DNC are just attacking anybody that comes close to them that resembles a, a Republican because Vivek Ramaswamy, which is more of an isolationist, if I'm going to be completely honest, was trying to talk to them and just hear their point of view. And then they actually chased him out. They, they told him to get out. So this is the interview here right after the event took place here. Now you're outside the DNC, but That's you right. just came from somewhere else. Tell us what happened. Yeah, so that was outside of the protests outside the DNC. It was it was pretty wild. Racist go Racist go Racist go But I wanted to first of all show up because I believe in practicing what I preach. I believe in free speech. Whether or not you agree with me, whether or not you like me, you have the right to speak your mind as long as it's peaceful. I don't know what exactly happened at the end there. But One of my favorite exchanges was, first of all, uh, buying with U.S. dollars, although they accept Venmo as well, some of this communist literature from this guy. Communists, the party of the next American revolution has been founded. Kind of interesting. Will you actually read it? Yeah, I plan to. I mean, yeah, I don't know about cover to cover, but I'll take a look at what he has to say. Why do you think that there were protesters outside of the DNC, but not the RNC? That's a good question. I think that the left, in part, is based on chaos. And I don't mean that in a negative way. I think conservatives tend to order their universe based on order, and liberals and the far left tends to order their view on disorder. And I completely no, agree with that because of the of the fact that outside of the RNC, you really did not see a lot of these protesters at all. I mean, I didn't even hear about one protest outside of the RNC whatsoever because the RNC is actually framed in a way that actually is based in reality. But the DNC and in, um, is instead based in the meetup reality, that anybody can just say whatever they want, even if it's not based in reality, based on facts whatsoever. So everybody just thinks that they have a say, even though they are not factually accurate at all. So that's exactly what the big difference is. There's a sense of togetherness on the Republican side, although there are some people that stray from that. Um, there is a sense of togetherness. On the Democratic side, there is no really sense of togetherness. They're just so divided on all these little things. There's... Um, there's a leftist and then there's a Democrat and then there is this and then there's that. And then there's just so many different fragments of that side that it's just gone completely off the deep end. So, of course, there's so many different fragments that you can even as a leftist, you can't even come into an agreement with a like a moderate voter because you just get mad and pissed off. That's why they're sitting here um, protesting something that they can't even control. There's a guy who stopped you. Are you a supporter of Israel? Do I, I support the United States, and because of that, I support Israel. And you try to have of a Of course, real because of the fact that you support America, that's exactly what they don't like. If you support America, they don't like you. And of course, if you support another um, democracy across the world, of course, they hate you then. So, of course, you're supposed to sit here and like tyrannies in communistic parties. Of course, you're, gonna, you're supposed to like those people. But when it comes to a democracy, nah, nah, you cannot like those people. No. And then they started calling you racist. Racists aren't welcome. That's here. a lie. Racists are welcome. Here. Here. Can you talk about that? Right, right. It was interesting. The racist charge was just, it just, it just wasn't make... the right insult for him to yeah. level. I think he could have done better than that. You know, one of the things I said is I do care about people, the well being and plight of people everywhere in the world, including in Gaza. But we can't have this conversation ignoring the reality of the event that precipitated it, which was, of course, an attack on Israel's sovereignty and its own people. Of course. And he, he changed his position a little bit here because I, I've been watching his position on this for a little bit. Of course, um, when he was on the debate stage, when he was running for president on the Republican side, he was saying that we should not really get into wars abroad. We should focus on American first. And I, I completely agree with that aspect. Of course, we should we should agree to as a as a Republican Party to actually focus on America's problems first and then focus abroad. Um, but at the same exact time, there are circumstances that that really need our help ASAP, which is the the war happening in Israel because of the fact that that is an ally of us and America. And then, of course, we can look back and we can see that um, that 
there's also different wars happening just like in Ukraine and stuff like that. We can focus on those wars, but also focus on America here. And then he was talking to Candace Owens and um, trying to debate really with um, D DC Drano on one of her episodes, her um, older episodes. And yeah, he was very sharp, very um, sharp on his toes when it comes to these questions being asked and very, very cr critical questions being asked of him because people really didn't trust him. That was more at the beginning of his campaign. So yeah, he changed his position just a little bit there. But I do appreciate his position now because of the fact that, yeah, of course, there are certain events that led up to exactly where we are in Israel now. And because of those events, Israel needs to protect themselves, just like how we needed to protect ourselves in America after 9-11. Of course, we did protect ourselves in after 9-11, but we also forgot about a big country that actually had a big role in actually starting this, and that is Saudi Arabia, because Saudi Arabia is a quasi-ally of America. We 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 did not completely ignore, but we somewhat ignored their role that they played after 9-11. So, of course, a lot of people started their conspiracy theories after that. Um, but, of course, now these people are going to believe these conspiracy theories, give these conspiracy theories all of the thoughts inside of their head, all of the time that they can actually be thinking about everything else. They're going to sit here and instead focus on, side, on um, conspiracy theories um, and then look at the, the facts that the media tells us. And sometimes they do tell us some of the facts. And they're going to sit there and then they're going to question all the facts and question this and question that. But then they're not going to give the same exact scrutiny to the conspiracy theories that they themselves are believing, which does not make any sense whatsoever. Um, of course, we have um, Elizabeth Warren, which is the best Pocahontas around. Um, Senator, Senator, Senator Warren forgot who made life unaffordable for the working people for the last three plus years. She's trying to make um, life more affordable, I guess, by saying that we need to vote for Kamala Harris, which does not make any sense whatsoever because that's just not the reality. We of the need situation. to make life more affordable. Yeah, we need to make life more affordable. So let's vote in the same exact people that's been here for the six, for the 12 out of the 16 years. It just does not make any sense. Um, the one person they tried to bury, Wendy R Wingarden from the a AFT, right? Let me just tell you, because of this, study by Education Week, right? The harm of school closures could last a lifetime, new research shows. So it just does not make any sense. The one person they tried to bury, Randy Weingartner from AFT, right? Yeah, she spoke. Why? why? Early let, on. Me just, let me just tell you because of this study by the Education Week, right? The harm of school closures could last a lifetime. New research shows there are plenty of parents in this arena watching at home all over America that remember during the pandemic that Randy Weingarten and the teachers union kept kids home, wanted to keep kids home forever, and that's permanently affected. And you know who suffered a lot? Kids at the lower end of the socioeconomic spectrum suffered the greatest. So I'm surprised that they're honoring her, but they're kind of burying her, trying to give her, she represents a big union, so they got to give oh, her Oh, it was not time. a prime time slot. Let's but, just but, put but, it that but, way. But let's just, I promise we're going to see and hear about that topic more as we move forward. Right. Yeah, of course, because of the fact that they want to only talk about this subject when it's framed in the way that they want it to be framed. If parents are taking it upon themselves to homeschool their children and actually have school of choice, then they do not like this position whatsoever. They want you to shut up. They want you to get out of polite society. But if you are staying home because of a of a of a virus, then they completely say, no, 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 stay home forever. Don't even worry about it. So, yeah, uh, so many businesses are closing. Eh, that's a small price to pay. And this and that and this and that. It just does not make any sense here. They're going to sit here and lie after lie after lie after lie after lie. But then, of course, when it comes to the truth and the reality of the situation, they're just going to ignore it completely. So with that being said, there is a speaker at the DNC that said that I urge all of us to stand together, support sexual assault survivors, believe them, and hold perpetrators accountable um and they gave the standing ovation to bill clinton so if we're going to sit here and believe all women why are you celebrating a person that had a sexual assault charge on him which actually got impeached because of that reason so of course it's just a complete back backwards world um they're going to sit here and invite bill clinton but then talk about sexual assault it just the Democratic Party is just upside down right now. Like I said, they need to get their stuff together. But actually, I don't want them to get their stuff together because I would rather 
the Republicans get their stuff together, and then I celebrate the Republicans. I'm not going to celebrate the Democrats. So with that being said, we're going to sum up this episode here. If you did like this episode and you did like this deep dive of D3 and 4 of the Democratic Party, um, the Democratic Nomination Convention, um, then like and subscribe because I do post new episodes of the show every single Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We will be reacting to James O'Keefe Media Group's um, invasion of the Democratic Party tomorrow. So with that being said, thank you all for watching. Thank you all for listening. And I hope they have a great rest of your day.